Hello, this is Lewis Katz, and uh, this lecture today is very quick. It's our safety rules and student agreement. So if you would like, uh, you can bring it up. I've sent the link. If you want to just listen, that's fine, but it would be good if you read the uh, safety agreement afterwards. Okay, and we're going to go down from the top to the bottom. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the chat window because we're going to be looking at the recording and then responding. So uh, let me know. Ceramics, it's really important that you follow the safety agreement. We'll talk about exactly why that might be true at the bottom, but it just makes sense. We have a telephone in the ceramics studio. It's at uh, one of the doors. And on campus, you can use it to call campus emergency, which is 4444. If you were dialing that on your cell phone, that would be 825-444 or 361-825-4444 uh, if you're out of the area code. Uh, you could also dial 911 and that gets the city emergency center. It is generally a better idea to call the campus emergency center. They can hear your 911 calls, but they can't respond to you if it's a 911 call. So you're likely to get a better, faster response with the on campus number, which is 4444. Uh, you are going to, uh, it says here, read, sign, date, and hand in one copy. We are going to take a test on this agreement. Uh, it'll be a simple test, but it will show that you have uh, watched this video. We have three kinds of glazes in the ceramic studio. A glaze is a coating of clay that coats the inside of a ceramic object. And kind number one is the kind that's designed to go on the inside of a functional container or really any container. It's designed to hold liquid safely, be easily cleanable, be durable, not get all marked up. That is called a liner glaze. The second kind of glaze is a kind of glaze that's not recommended as a liner for something. You can put it on the inside and no one will get mad at you or anything, but it's not really designed to be a good glaze for the inside of a functional vessel. The third kind is a kind of glaze where if you put it on the inside, it will not be safe or it might not be safe. And those kinds of glazes are called never aligner glazes. And if they end up on the inside of a pot, first I check the bottom to see who made it, then I drop it on the floor um, because I don't want them to leave the studio. That's any object that will hold liquids. So three kinds, liners, not recommended, and never a liner. Clay dust is hazardous. How hazardous is it? Normal exposure to small amounts of clay dust is no worse than going to the beach on a dusty day or being someplace where there's a lot of sand in the air, where there's a lot of fine dust. However, if you work in a ceramic studio that's really dirty for many, many years, you can get something called silicosis. Because of this, we don't allow any brooms or brushes in the studio for cleaning. None. You can't clean with them. Everything is clean with a sponge or a mop or a hose. The second part of this is that we don't allow dry processes. You can't sand dry pots and you shouldn't trim bone dry pots. Okay, next. If you bring something into the studio, it's a chemical, a clay, a glaze, anything like that, you have to check with your instructor first. Once it's in the studio, it's our responsibility. So if you're gonna bring something in and it's a clay material or a glaze or a chemical or anything, you have to ask us first. You can't fire kilns without an instructor's permission. At some point, we provide blanket permission for the bis kilns. But uh, until that happens, you have to ask each time. And we also have dry glaze materials in the corner of the studio and outside. And for those, you need permission.
in the studio in normal semester beginning students are use uh, supply dust masks for mixing clay and glaze materials for glazes we use respirators and they have p1000 p100 uh, cartridges on them that's in a normal semester no food or drinks in the ceramic studio and it is a mistake to mix your kitchen utensils with studio processes in any studio. So if you're working at home, don't use your kitchen stuff for uh, the ceramic studio. Safety goggles and a face shield must be worn when using a grinder or any high speed tool, looking into a kiln spy hole or cleaning kiln shelves. Long hair should be tied back when using any power tools or when firing kilns. No clothing with synthetic materials when you're firing kilns. If it catches fire, it'll melt to your skin while it's burning. It'll be a real hassle and potentially kill you. Uh, cotton is a real favored cloth in the ceramic studio because of that. When the roll door is moving, don't walk underneath it. They're heavy, and if they fall, they can kill you. We try to keep doors closed as much as possible, and we don't roll the wet clay barrels in and out because they are heavy and we've had near accidents. Closed-toed, low-heeled shoes are required in the studio. If you have very loose clothing, like a loose flowing skirt or dress, or dangling jewelry, or even a long apron. There are some restrictions on what equipment you use so that they don't get caught in the equipment. Uh, the clay mixers are particularly bad and dangerous with uh, long flowing clothing. You need to wear closed toed, low heeled shoes, sensible shoes in the studio. Students can't put their hands, tools, or parts of their bodies, other parts of their bodies in the clay mixer when it's running. And you'll get specific instructions about that if you're shown how to use the mixers. Please don't store your personal belongings in the studio. Of course, if they disappear, it's not my problem. There's only so much space in there and it gets to be a hassle if everybody brings in a lot of stuff and it eats up all the space. Um, you can't go into the offices or the graduate spaces without permission. At the end of the semester, students will remove all their work from the studio. This is the last day of final exams. It has to be gone so we can clean up. If you're showing the studio off to your parents or your kids or cousins or friends, children, Miners are never allowed on the kick wheels. Visitors are never allowed on any of the wheels without the permission of an instructor. Um, and they're also not allowed in the glaze area. Visiting children must be closely supervised, and this is especially true outside by the kilns or near running equipment. There's no smoking in the kiln yard. And if you fail to uh, follow all these rules, I can kick you out of the studio. Uh, I've been told that I can do this by numerous authorities on campus. Nobody ever says what the appeal procedure is, and I think there should be an appeal procedure. If the Dean of Students and the University Safety Officer say that I should take you back into class, I will. Uh, and uh, during the test, you will affirm that you have read and understood all the policies listed here. Um, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>